Right, so you have the gun, and we actually we actually have the gun here. Yes. Um, let's let's take that out. Okay. And show everyone <clears throat> what uh, what was just a weird discovery at one time. Okay. Now I know I'm kidding, but be careful because we've been told it will kill again. Yes. This is, and I'm still <laughs> questioning as to why we didn't follow someone's advice. <laughs> uh, this is the gun that. Um, First of all, I have to admit, this is the closest I've ever come to holding an actual historical weapon um, that we will learn to... While there's no, I guess there's no definitive proof that this is the gun, there is enough evidence to suggest... Going back a hundred years, is, is, there's no ballistics that right. can prove that it is the right. pistol. We had it checked out through a gunsmith, a local gunsmith. We also had the state police check it out. And they tried to trace back the serial number and whatnot. The only thing we really can say that we believe that is the pistol is because of the, um, the tracing of the, of the weapon. And the fact that when we look back at the old news clips that Marilyn's brother had mm -hmm. found, it said that the gun was never found. And it said that the gun was a 32 forehand in Wadsworth. The history of the gun shows that it was manufactured in 1872 through forehand in Wadsworth which actually was the original company that started Harrington and Richardson mm -hmm. in Worcester, Mass. I think there's enough circumstantial evidence oh, yeah. to prove without a shadow of a doubt that this gun is the same gun. And if David wanted to elaborate on that, is some of the characters in the book were also involved with the Hammonds and the Prouties. Right. So if you put all this together, you'll definitely come up with enough circumstantial yeah. evidence oh. to convict someone. Oh, and, and I, <coughs> I agree. I've, I've read the book. It's, um, it's a fabulous story. It's, um, I was speechless. Here. <laughs> I don't want to hold it too much. Um, it's a fabulous story. It's intriguing. It's got you know, true crime, uh, an interesting account of life back then. Um, but what I bring you here tonight for is the force that drove all four of you together to follow through this. Now, you were having dreams, nightmares for a, a long period of time. Mm -hmm. How, when did they start in, in conjunction with the gun? and, and was it, Were these before the story was brought to you? Yes. Yes, they were. Um, I had had dreams even as a young child of a Victorian home. Um, and my grandmother used to say to me, Linda, you should have been born in the horse and buggy days. I've never seen anybody that was so infatuated with that time period. Mm -hmm. So um, as I got older, of course, and, we, and I moved to Massachusetts, um, the dreams stopped. And then probably about a year or two uh, prior to Randy and Marilyn bringing the newspaper clippings down to me, I had had a dream of uh, Victorian Mansion again and of this woman. And the dreams kept coming and coming. And then after I read the clippings, I had a dream of this murder. And it was very clear. Which, it was, which murder? I had a dream that I saw this woman in a Victorian mansion and she was being strangled. And I could see her running to the front doors. They were double doors. She was running down this hallway. She had a white nightgown on. and her assailant was grabbing her from behind. He pushed her to the floor with his knee. He put his knee in her back and uh, he reached for her throat and ripped her nightgown down her shoulder. And I could see her struggling for her breath. It was as if I was watching a movie. That's how clear it was. And the dream shook me up so bad that um, it, it woke me up out of my sleep and it, it just seemed that I had been right there in the room with her. Mm -hmm. So um, that was actually after, the news, after I read the newspaper clippings. And then we had gone to see um, a psychic. And uh, at first it was a woman. Her name was Fallon. And uh, she took us in this room and we brought the gun with us. And she told me that you've been having dreams, she said. And uh, she said these dreams are... This, this lady is trying to come to you through these dreams. And 
that night I went home, and of course I don't know if it was a suggestive, you know, that I, it was in my mind mm -hmm. at that time. I had another dream. It was the same dream, only it was clear. And this time I could see the inside of the house very clearly. I was walking into a parlor. I saw a marble uh, fireplace with a mahogany mantle and a mirror over it. And uh, all the furnishings in the home were Victorian. Um, everything was from that time period. And again, I had this dream where I saw the woman running down the hallway, down a winding staircase, down a hallway. And it was like a repeat. So um, at this point, we were researching the story. And then we went to see Teddy Rabuin. Which is another psychic. Yes, another psychic. And we brought the gun. Uh, in fact, Marilyn, what had happened was we were researching the story. We had gone, well, getting away from the dream. Um, after Randy Marilyn brought the newspaper clippings, and I found, or at that point I thought we had the gun, we decided to research the story. So Randy Marilyn and I and Marilyn's brother at that point went to the Richard Sugden Library in town. We were going through microfilm and um, trying to find out what we could. And at that point, we had an unexpected surprise with this lady who approached Randy and Marilyn. I don't know if you want to. Right. This was uh, 